example, I'm Christoph Pasch. I will present you uh, Multipass TCP, our implementation in the Linux kernel. So um, to start off, um, you all have your mobile phones with uh, Wi-Fi and a 3G interface. And um, you can connect, for example, while you are here, you can connect to uh, the FOSDEM network and you can also connect to a uh, 3G network. But unfortunately, you will always only be using one of these interfaces, pro potentially only the Wi-Fi interface. And uh, so you are not using all the resources you have available to your phone. The same holds for uh, data centers, when, uh, where they have a huge and large uh, redundant infrastructure. And even if the servers deploy... Okay. Okay, so um, yeah, in the, uh, in the data centers where you have a large redundant infrastructure, um, even if you have link bonding, for example, installed on your servers, potentially you are not uh, using uh, your infrastructure and your redundant links in the best manner. And um, there's, so why is in fact this happening like this? It is because, uh, well, TCP is used for 95% of the communications over the internet. And um, TCP identifies a connection by the so-called five tuple. Um, every host has an IP address when he is connecting to the network, and uh, TCP also uses the port numbers. So TCP uses the IP source IP and destination IP addresses, and the source port and destination ports to identify this connection. And as an IP address is identified by um, is, is attached to an interface you cannot use TCP across multiple interfaces because, well, TCP uses these IP addresses to, um, to identify the connection and an IP address is linked to an, attached to an interface. So um, that's the reason why you cannot use your mobile phone as you want it, meaning uh, using Wi-Fi and 3G at the same time. If you could use Wi-Fi and 3G at the same time, well, you would have a higher bandwidth and potentially um, you can you can benefit from uh, failover, meaning when you when you have uh, your Wi-Fi connection running, your data stream going over Wi-Fi, then you lose your Wi-Fi connection. Well, without any problem, you could then switch over to three to three G, which is not possible with TCP nowadays. With TCP nowadays, you would have to restart the connection. And also, if you could use all the interfaces available, data centers would benefit a lot too. So, of course, um, at the IETF, there's a solution uh, being standardized. It's multipass TCP. And in fact, multipass TCP allows you to use several interfaces for the same data connection. Um, that way, well, you are pooling all your resources and you have potentially higher bandwidth. And um, you can also benefit from the failover capabilities I explained uh, earlier. Um, and especially for data centers, you have a better load balancing due to a fair coupled congestion control, which will uh, schedule the traffic among the interfaces in such a way that, um, that the, the load is uh, fairly distributed over the links in your, uh, in your data center. So um, what have we done at the IP networking lab in, uh, at the UCL? We have implemented uh, MPTCP in the Linux kernel, it's a very extensive um, implement, uh, extension to TCP. It uses about uh, 10,000 lines of code. Um, we have done a lot of performance evaluations and uh, validations to prove the feasibility of our uh, design. Uh, it's presented in different research papers. Um, I will show you at the end of this demo, uh, uh, at the end of this presentation, a live demo, um, because I have installed our kernel on, our, on my notebook and then I will connect to our MPTCP server at the university and show you how we can use 3G and Wi-Fi at the same time. And of course, our implementation is uh, open source and publicly available on our website, uh, you can see there. So I'll try to explain you now how uh, MPTCP achieves um, these, uh, achieves it to use several interfaces at the same time. Basically, um, you have the socket, standard socket API, so the application is still talking to regular uh, socket as it is for TCP. Then you have a multipass TCP layer which creates several TCP subflows. And each of these subflows is using uh, one of these, the interfaces. For example, the left uh, subflow you can see um, is running over Wi-Fi. The one in the middle is running over 3G. 
and then um, the data stream that is coming from the application will then be distributed over the different TCP subflows and that way um, it is possible to use all the interfaces available to your machine. Um, so from an implementation point of view what we have done is uh, uh, at when the application is creating the socket and calling the system call connect to establish the connection to another machine, we create the first TCP subflow, which is the so-called master subsocket, and this one will detect if the other side is also MPTCP capable. If that's the case, well, then uh, our kernel will create the, the, the structures necessary to handle multipass TCP, there we have the so-called meta socket, which is the interface between the different TCP subflows and the application. Um, and we create the different uh, TCP subflows going over the different interfaces also. Um, so the advantage of having a standard socket API and you're using regular TCP beneath is that um, we don't need to change the applications, meaning the applications uh, on our server we have running a patch and we didn't have to modify it so to, for it to be able to use multipass TCP. Um, the use of TCP subflows allows uh, multipass TCP, in fact, to bypass uh, firewalls. So even if the firewall does not uh, support, and you, uh, because usually, well, let's say, usually firewalls do not support uh, the deployment of new protocols. But as a uh, regular TCP is known to every firewall, multipass TCP is able to pass by these firewalls. Um, so coming back to the implementation, when uh, we have established the socket and uh, the application wants to send data, it will, uh, you know, through the standard socket API, it will call uh, the send or the write uh, system call. And uh, all the, the data stream will be pushed into the send queue. Um, from that moment on, the moment on the meter socket will then distribute with the multipass TCP scheduler will distribute the traffic over the different, different subflows. At the reception, we, uh, we are maintaining different queues, notably um, the out-of-order queue per subflow, which are, which are uh, necessary um, if you have, for example, losses in the network or reordering in the network, then you have to store your packets so that uh, you still have the, um, the same reliable byte stream. You have to, we have two queues at the meter socket, no, uh, the out of order queue and the receive queue. The out of order queue is again to hold uh, reordering across, to uh, reorder the packets uh, where, as they are coming in from the different subflows. And the receive queue is accessible by the application and uh, the application will read out of the receive queue the packets. So um, to show you some performance results we have done with it, in our testbed uh, where we have two machines interconnected with one gigabit links. Um, and in our testbed what I, what, what I am doing, we do Apache benchmarking, which means uh, we run 100 parallel clients uh, doing HTTP requests to the server. Um, and what I am plotting here is on the x axis you can see the transfer size, meaning the size of the of the response from the HTTP get. And uh, we are on the y axis we I show the ratio of requests per second in comparison to regular TCP. So um, the red line here is regular TCP. Of course, regular TCP compared to regular TCP um, is one at 100 percent. And you will see that when I use uh, when we use multipass TCP, we will be able to use both passes available. And for files coming from 500 kilobytes upwards, we managed to get uh, twice as much requests per second, just because the the second pass is all, will also be used by multipass TCP. And so we have in fact doubled the bandwidth. Um, when we have smaller file sizes. Um, it's not performing as much uh, as with the bigger files because uh, multipass TCP is doing more work and especially our implementation has still room for improvement so there, there may still be uh, um, may still be a performance increase possible. Um, so um, you can get MPTCP from our website. You can download it and uh, compile it yourself. We have an APT repository with Debian packages. 
Uh, we, you can, we have explained how to set up on a virtual box image, uh, user mode Linux. I have it on my Nokia N950. Um, maybe if there are Android people here, if they want to port uh, our Linux kernel to the Android kernel, it would be nice too, and we can, we can give you some advices. Um, well, contribute to the project. Uh, some missing features still need to be supported. Um, the code can still be optimized. We want to refactor it because currently it's not yet in the official Linux kernel. So there's still a, um, we want to push it in the future. We want to push it in the Linux kernel, but there's refactoring to be done. And of course, uh, it's always good to have people trying it out and testing it and reporting bugs. So um, I'll show you now the live demo. Um, I'm here at FOSDEM. I have the Wi-Fi connection to, uh, to FOSDEM's Wi-Fi. Uh, 3G, um, unfortunately, the 3G here is not very good. So um, we will see if the demo will work, because I only ha don't have, uh, only have an edge network. So um, yeah, we will see if the demo works well. Um, I have the MPTCP uh, capable server which is running our website and an MPTCP proxy, which means, uh, in fact, I can bypass traffic over this proxy doing MPTCP to the public internet. So I will, in my first test, I will show you uh, a connection to the MPTCP server, and later on I will uh, run a radio streaming, and you will see the failover of MPTCP. So um, here I'm on our website, and here on the right side, the top is the bandwidth used by the Wi-Fi interface, and the bottom is the 3G interface. So I have on our website, we have an, um, a speed test, and you will see now if I click on starting the test, and if my 3G connection is not down, hopefully. Okay, there it is. So my 3G, you can see here now traffic is going over the Wi-Fi connection, and the 3G connection at the same time. So this is not possible with regular TCP, and you have a uh, potentially increased bandwidth. Of course, now, while it's hard to reproduce these results because while well, a lot of people are using here uh, uh, the Wi-Fi connection. So, um, so this to show the, simul the simultaneous usage of both interfaces. I will now disable my uh, Wi-Fi interface and uh, launch a rap radio, and you will see the failover from uh, 3G to Wi-Fi. Take some time until it finds. So as you can see, resolving MPTCP, it means um, I'm going over our uh, HTTP proxy server. Now, of course, 3G connection is pretty bad at the moment here. Let's try it again. Okay, well, that, that's the demo effect. I'm sorry, okay, maybe, yeah, there we are going. Okay, now I got the connection. So now I, you can see the traffic going over uh, 3G. Maybe you can even... Um, uh, yeah, traffic is going only over 3G because I've disabled Wi-Fi. So that's the scenario. You're being moving with your mobile phone and you are, for example, using Spotify and listening to a radio. Now you enter Wi-Fi coverage. So let's imagine I enable Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, one click. So it takes some time until I get an IP address. So we have again to wait. So there we are. Okay, now I got the IP address and you can see uh, how the Wi-Fi interface starts being used. And basically, I can now remove my 3G dongle. If you would be using um, regular TCP, you would now need to restart your, uh, your, uh, your web radio. But with uh, multipass TCP, I didn't, didn't have to. So thank you very much. So basically, um, that's it. Um, um, you visit our website. So yeah, questions? Sorry. UDP. Uh, well, UDP is completely different because it's not a reliable byte stream. 
and um, currently there's no effort, as far as I know, in standardizing multipass UDP. But um, it may be possible to do something like this. But that's time is over. Time is over. Wait for him here.